He is risen. And the church says Christ is risen indeed. He is risen. He surely is. And it's a beautiful day, a day to celebrate and worship of our God, knowing that life has conquered death and that Jesus Christ has won it. My name is Stephen Gallagher, and I had the pleasure of serving in ministry here at CHUM. I'll be joined today with Pastor Anna, who will be preaching in our service this day. We're excited to be able to share and recognize the fact that death could not hold him, that Christ triumphed over death, that he is alive and he reigns. We want to welcome all of those that are joining us maybe for the first time here today. And for those that are joining with us online, we welcome you on this beautiful Easter morning. We had a wonderful sunrise service outside in the courtyard today. There was between 120 and 130 of us out there, and it was a bit <laughs> chilly. Not the time for an exceedingly long message, but we had an awesome gathering today, followed by a scrumptious breakfast. It was just incredible. I want to make sure you're aware that there is an announcement sheet within your program today, and a lot of different things going on in the life of the church, including our forthcoming youth benefit auction details are included in that program for you. Also, to let you know that uh, Pastor Jack and Pastor Anna will be at the welcome desk after the service today to connect with anybody who is new here or would like to talk to them. So would you stand with me as we welcome one another this day with a hug or a handshake, greeting one another in the name of the Lord. As you find your way back to your seats, I'm actually going to invite you to sit down for a moment. As you came in today, I love hearing all the happy Easter's. That's so lovely. All those echoes of joy and um, and light. Um, but as we as we come into this space today, we recognize that um, that we are entering an empty tomb, but we bring all kinds of things into this space with us. And sometimes there are things that we bring on Easter morning that we need to let go of in order to be able to move into a new and resurrected life. And so this morning, uh, as you came in, I hope you received a little card that said prayers of the people. Did y'all get a card that said prayers of the people? Awesome. Okay, so if you did not receive a card as you came in, I, w I invite you just to raise your hand and an usher will come and find you um, and bring you a card. Um, and this is, as we enter into this time of worship, this is an opportunity just to write anything on this card that is a concern of yours, that is a joy of yours, a hope of yours, a pain of yours, um, maybe something that you're lifting up on behalf of somebody else that you want to lay before God this morning so that you will be able um, to leave this service today in a fully risen way. And so um, if you, as you're writing, um, if you write at the top personal, then we will not read that one out loud, but we will give it to our prayer team for them to be praying over after the service. Um, and so, and, and into the, the new season of Easter. Um, and if you are okay with us reading it out loud later in the service, then just write down whatever you'd like for us to say, and we will do our best to read your handwriting um, and, and get to as many of them as we can um, later on in the service. So this time for you right now is just time for you to write um, whatever you'd like us to pray for um, as we begin our time of worship and prepare to enter the tomb so that we can come out released from death. While you're writing, as we sing this song, this uh, opening song, uh, it's called Holding On to Hope. It's one of my favorites. Um, and it's actually the, the last song that we sang uh, at the Good Friday service, at the Tenebrae service. Um, and this has happened a few times um, over the course of years at Chum, where that happens to be the last song we, we play. Um, it's the first word, the last words that we sing and that are the first words that we sing on Easter morning. Um, and I love this, that on uh, at the Tenebrae service, these were the last words um, that I happened to be singing. Um, but this morning, as we read uh, scripture a little bit later on about the women going to the 
tomb and being the first ones to share the news of the risen Christ. Um, that we start this morning with Amanda, who has a lovely voice, that's going to sing for us and lead, lead this song. Um, so we love just the, the imagery and the, the metaphor here that we're just replicating what we see uh, in God's word. Um, so we invite you to, to write down things as, as you're moved to and uh, enter in this space with us. Let's sing.
is all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing, we are, and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We'll see. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We pray. Come on, sing it out. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven's, come on, sing it out. Praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is
His blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon Him. One final breath He gave as heaven looked away, the Son of God was laid in darkness, a battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell
Jesus, today we, we remember the, the moment where we hear the story of the resurrected Christ. My God, we celebrate that this morning, this, this resurrection power. But God, we also celebrate all that led to that moment and the moments beyond that. God, we remember that our faith is a faith of a broken and healed Savior, of a wounded Christ, but also a resurrected Christ. God, and in this, we find that there can be this, uh, this peaceful exhale of when we're caught up in fear and anxiety because there's room for all of it within you. God, there's room for all of our pain, all of our wounds, all of our joy, all of the life, death, and resurrection we find in you. And so if you allow it, God, we'll allow it as well in this place, in our own hearts. It's in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen. You can have a seat. Friends, we're going to hear the gospel lesson for this morning from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Hear these words of resurrection. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb. Look, there was a great earthquake for an angel from the Lord came down from heaven and coming to the stone he rolled it away and sat on it. Now his face was like lightning and his clothes as white as snow and the guards were so terrified of him that they shook with fear and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here because he's been raised from the dead, just as he said. Come, see the place where they laid him. Now hurry, go and tell his disciples he's been raised from the dead. He's going on ahead of you to Galilee and you will see him there. I've given the message to you. With great fear and excitement, they hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell his disciples. But Jesus met them and greeted them. They came and grabbed his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that I'm going into Galilee and they will see me there. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. And so, friends, we get to celebrate on this Easter morning with a crowd of children who are just waiting to come into this space today. So come on down, kids. All kids who are in worship this morning, rise up, friends, and come on down to the front to uh, spend some time with Pastor Stephen reflecting on this scripture that we've heard today and on this story of resurrection. All kids who are here today, even if you're a kid just at heart, you're welcome to come on down, friends. Yeah, parents, if you have a real little one that's a little shy, feel free to come right along with them. They feel more comfortable maybe with you at their side. Yeah, come on in. Slide over. Have a good, find a good seat on the floor. Just warms our heart to see all of you here today. You know this is a special Sunday, right? Okay. So what do we call this Sunday? 
Easter Sunday. Everybody know what happened on Easter Sunday? Yes. What? What happened? Jesus rose. Yes, Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah, come on over. You can slide over. You can come on over right front here if you want. Can everybody see the puppet stage? Yes, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Come on over. Make some space. If we can get everybody over here in front. Okay, so while everybody's lining up, you know what I'm going to ask you, right? I'm going to ask you to watch carefully and listen closely. You remember that? Like I ask that all the time, kind of when we're together with puppets. So if you are willing to watch carefully and listen closely on the count of three, say yes. One, two, three. Yeah. Could you hear them back there? No, no. One, two, three. Yeah. Did you hear them this time? Okay, I'll be back. We've got to make arrangements. Are the arrangements made? Shag, do you have... <laughs> yeah, I got the stuff. Oh, well, it's Easter Sunday, so happy to share the news. But I've got to cook the meal. Uh, I, th I think everything's ready. Do kids, do you, have, do you have the cooked ham? Uh, pardon me? Uh, uh, kids, do you have the, the veggie tray? <laughs> did, you, did you say cooked ham? Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. See you later. Bye. I'm, I'm sure I heard her say cooked ham. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going on. It's Easter Sunday. That's what I know. See you later. Bye. Yep. Carl. Yeah. Do you know what I just heard? Uh, not sure. What'd you just hear? I just heard Buttercup say that we were having cooked ham. I'm personally offended. Well, don't be offended. Uh, she, I, I, she just, I don't know what she's saying, but I know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, morning, everybody. It's Easter Sunday, and uh, Buttercup's instructed me to get ready all the hay bales and, and the chop because the whole herd's coming to the barnyard for dinner today. Well, I just, I, I just can't contain myself. You know that, kids, right? You know what happens next, right? Right? Oh, uh, Uncle Carl. Uncle Carl. Oh, hi there, Curls. Uh, I've been practicing. You've been practicing? Yeah. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> kind of like, sounds like a uh, rooster to me. Uh, let me try again. <laughs> I'm just a calf. Well, this is how we do it. Here we go. You ready? Ready? <laughs> Okay, one more time, kids. An extra long one because it's Easter and it's such a great day. The whole barnyard is worked up. Everyone's excited. From the early morning hour, people were walking around uh, just excited, saying things like, He is risen. Christ the Lord is risen today, and, and he is, and that's why we celebrate. That's why we gather for worship every Sunday. Uh, all the animals come together in the grove for worship, and then this Sunday, wow, it's like multiple groups of animals coming to worship. Uh, everybody knows about it. Oh, oh, oh. Knows about what? Are you, are you, are you for real? Well, yes, I'm for real. I'm Oscar the Dog. Definitely real. Right, kids? Now you know I'm real. Yes, I am real. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, can't, do, can't deal with these kids. Well, I love these kids. I love you, kids. Yeah, I really do. And I, I just ask because everybody in the barnyard knows that it's Easter Sunday. Oh, kind of forgot about that. Well, how could you possibly forget about that? Well, I just wasn't thinking. Easter, yeah. My mama always talked about and celebrated Easter. Well, from what I heard, you did too as a pup. Well, that was long time ago. I don't celebrate Easter. These kids don't celebrate Easter. 
Oh, no, you don't. No, I know you don't. No, you don't celebrate Easter. Yes, they do. Yes, they celebrate the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Right, kids? Yeah. And because he lives, we live too. We live the way God instructs us now. And we know that we have life eternal even after we pass. Well, th this is it, I think. No, it's not it. This is just the staging area. We have eternity in Christ. Well, I, uh, that's exactly right. Kids, isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, kids, tell Oscar that Jesus Christ is risen. Yeah, I didn't hear that, so they don't believe it. Yes, they do believe it. Okay, kids, tell Oscar that Jesus Christ is risen. <sighs> you really believe that, kids? Yeah. Honestly? Yeah. That's a good thing. See you. Bye. Did I just hear him say that was a good thing? Yeah. Uh, there's hope for Oscar. We're praying for that dog, right? Yeah. yeah, we're praying for that dog. We really are. And someday that dog is going to open his heart to Jesus. I hope someday is like next day or today. Well, we want to open our hearts to Jesus and celebrate that Jesus rose from the grave. Are you kids ready? You kids ready to wrap it up? Here we go. What are we doing in the barnyard? <laughs> Carl, I'm still hurt. I still think she said ham. <laughs> I, I got to go. I got to go deal with Lanny. See you. Bye. Friends, it is so good to celebrate Easter with you. We're so glad that you could join us from Sunday School, those of you who popped up here um, for the Barnyard Bunch. And so as you go now back to Sunday School, and some of you are going back to your parents and caregivers right in here, um, I want to just say Happy Easter. So can we say that really, really loud? I'll repeat after me. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. You made my day. All right, friends, so you're going to follow Miss Angie, those of you going back to Sunday school, those of you who are remaining in here, grown-ups, if you have prayers of the people cards that you filled out at the beginning, we invite you now to just hold those up and an usher will come and rescue those from you so that we can pray over them after the sermon that we're going to share in right now. So now for grown-ups, it's the time to turn in your prayers of the people card and children have an amazing Easter. Can everybody wave? at the children as they leave. We will love, we love you and we'll miss you. <laughs> Easter is the best, friends, is it not? Can we lift up one more? Christ is risen. Let's try again. Christ is risen. Amen. Hallelujah, friends. It is such an awesome tradition that in the life of the church, we begin every Easter service with a Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Um, and so we're going to do that one more time. So just like gather all of your energy as we prepare for that after the ushers are done doing their collection. All right. And, um, and we're just going to have a moment then where we, awesome. I'm so glad y'all wrote your prayers. We're really excited to pray over uh, the things that you want to have lifted up today. Beautiful. All right. Are you ready? Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let's do a hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 You know, all throughout Lent, we refrain from saying hallelujah. That's another tradition of the church. So when we get to this day, um, it, it feels like it really packs an extra beautiful punch, doesn't it? So we've, we've come through Lent, and we're here. So now what? Right? Now what? We have figured out, friends, I think, how to be Lenten people 
a people who sit, who often conk off like the disciples did in an exhausted, restless sleep when we probably should be praying. We're a people who know how to endure darkness in this world. We're a people who can put one foot in front of the other. We can trudge along through days of temptation and betrayal and the long walk to freedom, as Nelson Mandela would call it, right? We are used to all of that. So much of what we experience out there, and even in church, is a Good Friday world. But Easter brings a new season. It's a whole new season in the church year. It's a whole new season everywhere. And I know the transition is hard. Our church has certainly experienced enough of that to know over the last few years. Amen? Mm -hmm. But a new season is here. A new season gives us an opportunity to anticipate what lies ahead of us. Ahead of us. This is the morning, friends, when we stop going like this. And we tune our eyes to be focused in a new direction. In this particular season, I have so appreciated the Gospel of Matthew's take on the resurrection. Now, friends, I'm pretty partial to the Gospel of John. I almost always preach on that in Easter. I've got a million sermons on the Gospel of John. I love that deeply personal, extremely emotional moment in the garden when Jesus speaks to Mary and she recognizes him in the person of the gardener, and he calls her name, and she calls back to him with a catch in her voice. She says, Rabuni, teacher, is it you? Right. And every year I choke up you know, picturing myself meeting Jesus in that moment. But Matthew's story of the resurrection is in lots of ways, it's completely different, but it is so powerful for, I believe, this moment in time. The Good Friday world, I think, is in need of a Jesus earthquake. Not the completely tragic kind that we've seen in other parts of the world, in Turkey and Syria, but the completely life-giving kind that gives our hearts and our bodies and our minds this jolt that is impossible to ignore and transforms the way that we see everything that is ahead of us. It is so easy when we have experienced repeated disappointment and dead ends to start to believe that that's all there is. Anybody relate to that? When Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb, they thought they'd seen it all. Their minds, their bodies, they were overwhelmed with a knowledge of death, a knowledge of heartbreak, And they had no reason other than everything that Jesus had ever said. But, you know, that was hard to believe. So they had no reason to believe that the tomb would hold anything other than what they already knew. They looked ahead in their lives, and all they could see was more of the same. Because in some ways, they were looking for death. But what was actually ahead of them was a seismic shift. They felt the earth move under their feet. And in the exact same spot where they had come looking for the dead, a messenger from God opened up a whole new life. That angel manhandled that rock that was supposed to seal death in with ease and then as though to say, you know, I'm all over this, plopped himself right down on top of it, letting everybody know who was in charge. And unsurprisingly, friends, the guards who were supposed to be keeping death all neatly locked up were the ones that were shaking in their boots. 
it is terrifying for those of us committed to keeping things under control. Anybody here have control issues? Hmm? Keeping things under control and according to the tomb-like ways of this world, when messengers from God show up and shake up, everything we've decided for ourselves should be true. The Greek word for guard, friends, literally means someone who is maintaining things. Let's keep those old ways intact. When the Gospel of Matthew says they are so terrified that they shook with fear, it's the same Greek word derived from the word for earthquake. So we've got two earthquakes now in this text. Things are shaking. And interestingly, it doesn't say that they were afraid of the actual earthquake. Like, who here thinks that they would be afraid if an earthquake, an actual earthquake happened right now? Would we be a little concerned? Yes, I would think so. But they seem to be completely oblivious to that. The physical state of the world, not their worry. They are terrified of this messenger, of this one who is clearly not afraid of death, who is powerfully plopped right on the doorway to the tomb, transforming it from the entry to death to a vision of life. And while that messenger is sitting pretty up there, shining and bright, those guards literally become the status quo of what they were trying so hard to protect. They become like dead men. And that literally means they become like what lacks life. Is that what's ahead for us? Is that the character that we find ourselves in in this story? I mean, like, we could choose that. But why would we if we've got options, friends? We've got options. What other characters could we choose to be like in this story? Hmm. Now, did you notice that the women who came to the tomb that day, they saw that same scene play out, but instead of guarding places of death, even though that's what they were used to, they also did come looking for something else. What, who were they looking for, friends? Who are they looking for? Yeah, yeah, it's not a trick question. <laughs> Jesus. They were looking for Jesus. And so even when the earth moved under their feet, right, they were not paralyzed. They could still move forward to see what else was ahead. And maybe, just maybe, even though it's super, super crazy, maybe it actually was still Jesus. And maybe, just maybe, there's life. There's life for him. There's life for us. Maybe, just maybe, the angel messenger from God said, Jesus is going ahead of you. Let go of what's back here. Jesus is going ahead of you. Now, did that mean that they weren't scared? I doubt it because they must have looked terrified because the angel did have to tell them, don't be afraid. How many times in the Gospels do we hear those same words, right? So it must mean that we have an issue with this. We have an issue with fear. He said, don't be afraid. And when they went away from there looking for Jesus, it says they still had, even though they were told not to be afraid, they still had what? Fear. And... Something else. They had fear and excitement. 
So, friends, this morning we've got kind of a silly, but Easter's for fun, silly, silly gift uh, for all the kids in the congregation today. Um, the kids that went downstairs are getting them from their Sunday school teachers, so they're not going to get left out. So the ushers are going to give out um, some kids. You don't have to come forward. We'll bring them to you in your pews. Pews. <laughs> Chairs. <laughs> Been a church geek for a really long time. All right. <laughs> so... So friends, we've got, we've got something um, that's pretty familiar on Easter Sunday. Uh, how many people this morning got jelly beans in their Easter basket? Yeah? Awesome, Ruby. Very pleased to hear it. I really think that Easter baskets should be something that um, we continue to get as grown-ups. <laughs> like, it's such a festive, um, festive thing. Uh, so... Maybe if you also are feeling like a kid today, you can grab one of the things that the ushers are bringing around as well. They're bringing around jelly bellies, friends. Not just any jelly bean, but the best jelly beans. And uh, when I, I don't know about you, but when I receive an Easter egg full of jelly bellies, I feel both of the things in this text. I feel a little bit of fear and I'll tell you why, and a little bit of excitement, right? and I'll tell you why, All right? So let's, uh, let's let everybody who feels like a kid today grab some jelly bellies, and you can rip open that packet if you like, <coughs> um, and maybe share them with your neighbors. Here's my thing about jelly beans, because usually they don't come in, in labeled packets. Usually they come in, you know, your parents put them in, a, in an egg, and you don't know actually what's in there, right? You don't know what's in this little tomb of an egg? It could be that when you open it, you're going to chomp into black licorice. Oh, no, 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 don't even, don't even, no. Black licorice is like the most despised and rejected jelly bean. Do not even <laughs> try to tell me that this is an okay thing to eat on Easter, all right? could be black licorice. This is my fear, friends. I mean, it could be grape, but it could be black licorice. And you just don't know until you bite in, right? Same thing with those, like, they look kind of like a, like a white mottled color, you know? That could be pina colada. Or it could be Buttered popcorn, friends. All right, let's hear it for buttered popcorn jelly beans. Anybody, the best jelly belly flavor that there is. There's that mysterious buttery, like, I don't even know what it is. It, like, fills your mouth like a mist of butter. And then there's the, like, kettle corn aftertaste, right? How do they do that? This is what I look forward to every year, friends. The fear and the, like, super, super excitement, right? Now, this is kind of a silly example, but I hope that you will never look at Jelly Bellies the same way ever again, and that every year on Easter, you will think to yourselves, ah, the Gospel of Matthew. What did we learn from that text? <laughs> right? <laughs> we learned that ahead of us, there seems to be both fear, black licorice, <clears throat> and excitement, right? Now, friends, our awesome worship leader, Andy, uh, last week shared a quote with me that I will remember for the rest of my life. It speaks powerfully to this experience, I think, of fear and excitement, and to the women at the tomb and to us, right? It goes like this. Fear is excitement, just without the breath, okay? Pretty good, right? I was like, you don't mind if I preach on that, do you? And he was like, no, that's good. Fear is excitement, just without the breath. This is so important for us, friends, in this text. Now, it's a quote that's attributed to a psychotherapist named Fritz Perls, but it makes so much sense in this story. I want you just to think for a moment about the last time you were truly afraid, 
all right, maybe that's not the place we really want to go today, but we're not going to stay there, all right? So the last time you were truly afraid, right, what happens to us? Our, our pulses race, right? our hearts pound, we're on high alert, right? And the same is true when we're excited, isn't it? It's just that when we're afraid, we forget to breathe. We tense up. We become like the guards in this story. We become like dead men. Now, when we're excited, we often breathe so hard that we're like gasping, like, <gasps> buttered popcorn. <gasps> yes. Right? And sometimes we're both of those things at the same time. Right? Just like the women in this story. But they did keep breathing, which again meant that they could move ahead. They could look forward. They could breathe in the breath. In the scripture, it's the ruach. It's breathed into us from the very beginning, the breath of life. So if we are afraid at all right now, and Let's just be real. I don't, I don't know that any of us are not afraid of something about what's ahead for us in life. Right? When was the last time that we just paused to breathe and to let God fill us with a resurrected life? I had a moment like this just this past week. You know, there's a lot happening around here. There's a lot happening in the life of the church. There's a lot happening in my life. And I had a moment at my desk last week where I could feel my chest tighten right? and my breath shorten in these little panicked bursts. And I'm really glad that I had to preach on this text because a voice from the great beyond said, remember to breathe the breath of the resurrected life. And when we breathe, what do we receive? Well, wonderfully, friends, the Greek word for excitement in this text is kara. Anybody here named Kara? Any Karas here today? Oh, sad man. Okay, it's the same word, kara. It literally means joy because of grace. Isn't that a beautiful name? Joy because of grace. The word for grace is charis. When we breathe in, we breathe in joy because of grace. We might be afraid often, friends, and this text tells us that there's no shame in that. Afraid of death, even sometimes afraid of life. But in the midst of that tension, we can also move ahead if we breathe in the breath of God, which is filled with this joy because of the knowledge that God's grace goes before us. That's what in the Methodist tradition we call prevenient grace. It's undeserved, unearned, eternal forgiveness, love, and life that is already present everywhere that we have yet to arrive, which is a lot of places. And my favorite part of this text, we're going to and on this vision. My favorite part of this text is when the women hurry away from the tomb right? and they're running to tell the disciples about what they've heard and they've been told that Jesus will meet you in Galilee. You'll see him there. That's what they're told in Galilee, right? Now, Galilee, friends, is 138 kilometers from where they're standing. That is a long walk. Picture yourself in their shoes. That is a lot of panicked breathing. Long way to wait to meet the risen Lord that they've been promised. So let's just again think for ourselves how long it can feel sometimes to get to Easter. How long it can feel when we're experiencing grief and betrayal. But Jesus seems to understand how painful and long that road can be when we can't quite see and grab onto that resurrection life yet. And so he does the best thing ever. He cuts him off at the pass. It doesn't even say where 
It's just like, he's like, yeah, you'll see me in Galilee in 138 kilometers. I'll be right with you. And then in like the next sentence, it's like, surprise. (gasps) Actually, I'm right here. Just pops up on the road. As though to say, I am what's ahead for you. I am here when you're scared, when you are excited, when you're sad, when you're filled with delight. I am here. You don't have to wait for me. I won't make you wait. I'm right here alive on the road with you. And so friends, in the midst of all of the fear and the excitement that we feel every single day beyond Easter, ahead of us, may there be more of the same. A road that's not leading to death alone, it's leading to life with Jesus. So let's just, let's just drill that into ourselves right now. All right? So, so what is ahead for us? I think the answer is, Life with Jesus, yes. So what is ahead for us? Life with Jesus. What is ahead for us? Life with Jesus. Let's say it one more time like we actually believe it. What is ahead for us? Life with Jesus. That's what I thought you thought. And what's ahead is an earth-shaking, tombstone-rolling, earth-shattering life. And to that, friends, I say hallelujah. Can I hear one? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, friends. All right, we're going to go into a time of prayer, and we're going to pray over all of the things that we need to leave behind in the tomb in order to be able to step out and experience what's ahead of us in this resurrected life. So we got worship team members that are going to join me um, here up front as we share your prayers with each other and with God. Let's go into a time of meditation on the life that God is laying out for us. We realize, Lord, that in this life there is pain and there's death, there's confusion, and there's also a deep and abiding hope that we can endure it all and not just endure but experience the fullness of an abundant life. And so we lift up these prayers this morning with gratitude for your presence, Lord, in the midst of all that we experience. We pray, God, that you will lead this parent's children on your path for them, that they will experience your joy and your peace. for Andrew Musso and family for continued strength and faith for all those who are battling cancer. We're praying for the Palco family with the sudden death of the father, Dan. I pray for the physical and mental health of friends and family. We pray, God, prayers of thanks for this beautiful spring, for the flowers, for neighbors and friends. God, we are made for community, and for that we praise the Lord. We pray for peace and comfort for those who are settling into assisted living and nursing facilities, for comfort for their caregivers who are adjusting, and for peace. A parent praying for their children that they may find a church to worship and to raise their own family. Praying for a friend who is battling addiction and has relapsed. Praying for Bree's eye surgery happening tomorrow, Lord. Praying for the family and friends of Jaron Lee. Praying for a brother and his neighbors who were the victims of a tornado in Little Rock, Arkansas. Praying for the renewal, renewal of Christ in my life. Praying for the family of Bill Mackey who passed away on March 19th, especially Jane. 
praying for hope and guidance for our loved ones, our families here and in heaven. A prayer for a parent's health and for a son's health. Praying for hope for all who awoke in fear this morning, for more oppression, hatred, disease, and personal distress. Praying that the eyes of all people are open to injustices and racial issues that continue to hurt. God, we pray for renewed faith, discernment, direction, hope, healing, time management for loved ones, friends, and family, and for more to come to have a personal relationship with Jesus life everlasting through our Lord God. We also pray, Lord, for Frank, for a healthy baby to be born, for Jack and Tori. Lord, hear these prayers of your people, these prayers over the areas of death in our world, and these prayers over the life that you have created for us. Breathe into us all, Lord God, this morning, the sweet, fresh, renewing breath of your life as we embrace the risen, resurrected state that you have called us to. And so God, we invite one another now to stand as we're able in body and in spirit as a risen people, an Easter people, even if in a Good Friday world, to stand as we proclaim and affirm the faith that we believe. And so I do invite you now to stand as you're able, friends, and to respond with the words on the screen. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. No. In all, In all things, things we, we are, are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And friends, you may be seated. And we're going to continue at this time with the presentation of our tithe and offering. It is an opportunity to present our generous giving joyfully unto the Lord. Just to let you know of God's resurgence of vitality in our ministries, on Sunday during the morning or evening, we have over 80 children and teenagers together gathered for worship and engagement in a variety of ways in our congregation. And your gifts help support that ministry. Our director of student ministry, Sarah Nagengast, is beginning to go full-time with us. Uh, and in June, on June 1, and we're so excited that our ministries are emerging and developing the way they are. Thank you very much for your giving. To understand, to know that you are kind. I don't need to have the answers, to trust you through the night. I'll rest here in the knowing that I may never know. I'm holding on to faith. I'm holding on to hope. Would you join with me in prayer, please? God, we are so very grateful for the opportunity that we have to gather and worship on this day, your day, this day where we proclaim boldly and loudly that Jesus Christ is risen. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of grace through Jesus, your Son, 
our Lord and Savior. We present ourselves before you this day as a living sacrifice, Lord, to honor you in all things, to lift up your name. Lord, we want to lift up also persons that have been um, concerned on the heart of so many throughout the course of the week. And from our own prayer list, Lord, we lift up uh, Julie Clark. We lift up the Shoe family. We present before you Logan, Logan, Luke Morgan, Mary Jane Williams. We pray for Joan Watkins. Pray for the Kraft family and the strength that comes from your spirit through the hope of the resurrection, realizing that in losing their father just passed a few weeks ago, that life has conquered death and to be absent from the body is to be present with you. So thank you, God, for your wondrous love and amazing grace. May our sensitivities to your presence abound and increase day by day, for you are not confined to a grave. You are risen. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with us here as, we, as you're able as we sing this final song? <clears throat> This is one that you might not have sung for a little bit, uh, especially in New Life. This is one we do. Um, it's, a, it's a hymn called Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Let's sing this together. Hope it brings back some uh, wonderful memories. <laughs> to live.
There is nothing to fear, much to be excited about. And so go now to live a resurrected life. In the name of God, the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer, go in peace. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.